Mr. P.Z. Myers! Yeah, nice hat, I know. Okay, uh, it's been a great afternoon, hasn't it? Thank the organizers who have provided all these wonderful, wonderful people to speak at you who have also come up before me to make me feel inadequate. But okay, it's, it's been a great day, but it's been raining. I have to follow Greta and Tim Minchin and Adam Savage and all these great people. And I gotta tell you, I've been contemplating my sins. I've been wondering what I did to deserve this. And after a little introspection, I realized, yes, I am a sinner. There is a sin that is my favorite. It's one I indulge in several times a day. I kind of like, I really kind of like wrath. And I am feeling wrathy today. It happens every time I get closer and closer to Washington, D.C. There's something about this place that makes me angry. You know, we live on a planet that's jam-packed with seven billion people. But what has been one of the hot-button issues in Congress and the presidential race lately? Contraception. This is insane. This is absurd. This is not what we should be talking about. That issue is settled. But it's Congress taking seriously the idea of making in, uh, contraception uninsured. And then, of course, to help them, we've got the Catholic Church, one of the largest institu religious institutions in the world, which makes opposition to family planning a part of its dogma and opposes condom use, even in countries where it's essential for disease prevention. So I'm feeling wrathful. We're confronted all the time with evolving viruses and bacteria. The Red Queen really rules the biological world, and we have to keep running just to keep up pace with the uh, changing microorganisms. Yet policymakers and the public deny vaccination and evolution itself and question the value of biomedical research. Maybe they don't believe in evolution, but the microorganisms trying to kill us are taking full advantage of it. So I'm feeling wrathful about that. Also, it doesn't show today, but our climate is changing by our own hands. And we can see this pattern of accelerating change writ in the rising graphs of CO2 and temperature. Confronted with a challenge and the inevitable consequences of our current behavior, leaders of congressional committees on environment and energy hide behind their goddamned holy books. They say, God promised not to kill us. Therefore, we should sit on our hands, keep spewing our industrial byproducts into the air, keep making money, and live in denial until the reckoning comes, of course. How effective can you be as a steward of the environment when you believe action is futile in the face of a god's desires? That kind of pisses me off. Maybe you've noticed, but we're at war. On one side of this war, war we have fanatical members of a death cult who believe that dying is a rite of passage into paradise. And on the other side, we have fanatical members of a death cult who believe dying is a rite of passage into paradise. This cannot end well. Combine that with the fact that too many of the people on our side with their fingers on the triggers are demented goddamn ghouls who believe that we are in the end times. I'm talking to those people over there. 
And further, they believe that Armageddon is a good thing. We are the people who oppose mass death and catastrophe. They're the ones who embrace it. Now, I got to say, though, my wrath is entirely bipartisan. While one party in our, in our government seems more willing to throw our children into the bloody maw of war, the other party seems just as willing to destroy the other side's children remotely with drones and bombs. Perhaps if they possessed humanist values rather than bloody-handed Christian values, they'd be less likely to murder non-Americans and recognize our common humanity. And you know what's getting in the way of getting anything done? Our leaders are mired in a web of fantasy and wish fulfillment. An example, we know for a fact that abstinence-only sex education does not work. All it accomplishes is to keep kids ignorant and unaware, increase the frequency of teen pregnancy and sexually transmitted disease. Yet what do state legislators, legislatures all across the nation promote? The solution that accomplishes the exact opposite material re result that we should desire, but does satisfy the Puritans and prudes who live to foster guilt and shame. Another example, you may know who I'm talking about here. Happy clappy fools who sponsor the promotion of government funded quackery. Why do we have a well-funded agency throwing money down the drain of homeopathy, herbal hocus-pocus, needle-diddling, and magical hand-waving? I want medicine that works, not hokum and fast-talking scoundrels and an illusion of efficacy. Yet another example, our draconian war on drugs. We have the largest proportion of citizens in jail of any country on earth. And most of them there are for victimless crimes, for puritanical efforts to use the cudgel of the state to enforce a self-righteous drug morality. It mainly seems to be used to justify the oppression of racial minorities and as prisons are privatized for profit. So we live in this diverse, pluralist country with deep inequities in economic and social opportunities. And what have we got working in Congress for us? We've got forces training to exclude, to demonize, to exploit, using the two greatest forces for hate and tribalism humanity has ever discovered, religion and greed. You want to wreck the planet? You want to wreck the nation? Mask your opacity with piety, and it works every time. Now, where will we find solutions to these problems? Will prayer save us? No. I can think of nothing more ineffectual than closing your eyes and pretending an imaginary Superman will swoop down and save us. In every war we see this, each side begs their deity to protect them and smite the other, and in every war the killing proceeds unimpeded. But our representatives know that it makes a fine photo op to stand on the steps of Congress with heads bowed and hands idle. Or even sillier, they wander around daubing the doors with oil because for some reason God loves Greece. <laughs> Will the holy books save us? No. They're old folk tales and legends, vague prophecies and promises, outmoded moral guidelines. There is a pretense to wisdom, but none is present. Fools love to wave that magic book about and hide their ignorance behind a cloak of tradition. And we always did it that way. And what was good enough for my dad is good enough for me. But this isn't the 19th century anymore. And medieval advice is dead weight and a burden to human progress in the 21st.
Will faith save us? No way. Faith is a vice pretending to be a virtue. It's lies and errors and frothy nonsense deluding us and distracting us from action. There is no salvation in wishful thinking, only inertia. Faith is the enemy of reason. The one thing every single one of us here must be united in despising is faith. It's the barren refuge of the vacuous, the fearful, the frauds, and the obstacles to accomplishment. So I'm feeling a little bit cranky. But at the same time, I'm optimistic. I have hope, not faith. Nope, not faith, but I do have hope. And I see hope right here in this rising tide of secularism, this great crowd of people all here because you aren't going to stand for irrationality anymore. Because you want reality to rule. I see hope in science and technology, because like it or not, we are a tool-using species, and science is how we solve problems. We are committed. We either correct our problems using the to tools we have to hand, we change our course, and we come up with new answers or billions will die. That's my prophecy. I also see hope in a more liberal culture that what we will do is have the flexibility to adapt to a world that is changing fast, that we will gladly embrace diverse new ways of thinking by accepting everyone as equals and co-contributors to solutions. We cannot afford to tell half the population that their job is changing diapers or cleaning the kitchen. Is this a bunch of crazy we cannot tell brilliant people that their only role in our society can be mowing our lawns or driving our cars because of the color of their skin or the accents in their voices. I see hope in all you people who say our solutions must be found in the real world not fantasies of the supernatural, in people who value reason, logic, evidence, and experiment, in people who are willing to try, and when something doesn't work, to back off, admit error, and try something new. That's what this rally is all about. It's a call for people to rise up in wrath, to oppose the idiots who come to power behind, by hiding behind the ridiculous proxy of a god, it's time for us to fight, to change the world, to make a better world for people, the people, not plutocrats and priests. But let me leave you with one message. I've been seeing signs around. They say you can be good without God. Let me tell you, no one fought for change by being nice. I want you all to join me in being bad without God. Thank you.